practical insights on the management of food supply chains and businesses and deliberate on solutions for managing food loss and waste. Food loss and waste is an important issue to tackle given multiple social, economic and environmental benefit it provides. A question that also comes up is, uh, what is food loss and waste? And it's generally defined as food that is intended for human consumption, but not eaten by people for whatever reason. Food supply can be lost or wasted anywhere along the supply chain uh, during the production, handling and storage, processing and packaging, distribution and market or consumption stage. So it is important to work on reducing food loss and waste as the data indicates one third of all food is lost or wasted each year globally. Food loss and waste costs glo uh, the global economy 940 million each year and 8% of annual greenhouse gas emissions are due to food loss and waste. In fact, if food loss and waste was its own country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter in the world. An estimated 931 million tons uh, uh, or 70% of total food available in 2019 went into waste with bins according to UN research. Uh, although data for India is patchy, which my colleague Monica Agarwal will talk about a bit more. We have been as part of Kolu Food and Land Use India Coalition working more on um, food, and, food loss and waste issues. Uh, food loss and waste in fact has been identified as an important transition that the world needs in the Growing Better Report 2019 uh, to transform the food and land use systems. And why is it so? Because there are many benefits of reducing food loss and waste. Social, as I was saying earlier, in terms of improved food security for a growing population, feeding hungry people, economic in terms of both increasing efficiency, uh, avoiding unnecessary costs, but also generating new revenue sources and environmental, of course, in terms of conserving and protecting natural resources, contributing to reduce climate change. Working on food loss and waste issues becomes specifically important uh, in context of India, especially with the uh, pandemic as India plans a more green recovery um, post-pandemic, given enhancing food and nutritional security by enhancing farmers' income and strengthening rural livelihoods is key uh, for India's strategy uh, moving forward. And we do have Sustainable Development Goal 12.3, which is specifically about halving per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer level and reduce food losses along production and supply chains, including post-harvest losses. Given the large, this objective, uh, today, we would like to discuss about uh, the key issues, uh, specifically around measurements uh, that have been implemented to reduce food loss in waste. Also introduce uh, Friends of Champion 2023, as well as identify potential solutions for managing food loss in waste. I am delighted to introduce my colleague, Monica Agarwal who is a senior manager at Sustainable Landscapes and Restoration Program at WRI India. She leads our ongoing work on food loss and waste and other research on sustainable and regenerative agricultural practices. Monica comes with an extensive experience in grassroots level program implementation, policy research and advocacy in pastoralism, food security, financial inclusion, land tenure. Prior to WRI India, she has worked with Center for Pastoralism, Foundation for Ecological Security, International Land Coalition, South Asia Pastoralist Alliance, among others. Over to you, Monica, to give an overview of food loss and waste in India. You have about five minutes. Thank you so much, uh, Ruchika, for that uh, introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope my slides are visible. All right. Yes, so, I will be, so I will be giving a very brief overview of uh, food loss and uh, waste in India and the insights and reflections uh, that I share today, in fact, come from the research that we have been uh, doing on food loss and waste and we will be launching it uh, next year month in the form of a, a working paper. Uh, so food loss and waste, what does it mean in India? We all know that food can be lost or wasted anywhere in the food supply chain from production uh, to consumption. In India, food loss is referred uh, to mainly as harvest and post-harvest losses. And there have been several studies by ICR and other agriculture universities to assess the decrease in quantity of food as the food moves from production to consumption points. 
on the contrary uh, there is very limited data and discussion on uh, food waste in india uh, but why do we want to know how much it is one question that interests everyone and everyone asks how much and where in the supply chain uh, uh, because we all know that uh, we need to measure to be able to manage uh, now india is actually one of the very few countries uh, which have conducted national level uh, surveys studies on assessment of post harvest losses so just to give you an idea the last one which was done by icr sipet in 2013 14 Uh, estimated a loss of 92000 uh, crores of uh, uh, money that we lose in the form of uh, food loss but it is an underestimation as it does not include losses in the last mile transport and storage and the several other studies by icr and other institutions have indicated that in perishables at least there is much more uh, food loss uh it also doesn't include food losses in so called undervalued uh, supply chains we have uh, so many value chains uh, around ntfps or say custard apple or jack fruit so all that doesn't get included here and also uh wastages of food at the consumption point so let's see if we have anything on uh, food waste so early this year food waste index report by unep was released which estimated that uh, we are wasting around 50 kg per capita annually in india but it was based only on three studies and the sampling was uh, not so clear so between these two <coughs> slides uh, it gives us uh, an indication of the quantum of uh, food loss and waste and why it is important uh, to address uh, this uh, issue uh, in india but there are measurement issues so when we looked at different studies on food loss and waste uh, there are issues in comparability of data because we use different definitions and matrix to estimate food loss and waste and it is important because lack of consistent information on hotspots and critical loss points in the food supply chains have implications on targeted uh, interventions and obviously on uh, having uh, effective uh, solutions uh but this doesn't mean that we don't have we do have uh, this is certainly a gap uh, in research on food loss and waste in india but we do have enough insights from existing in studies from existing interventions from several organizations who are working on it to start to take actions on managing a food loss and waste but maybe we need more coordinated uh, effort uh coming to reasons of food loss we know there are multiple reasons for food loss and waste in india in india specifically poor threshing or poor harvesting techniques are said to result in substantial losses we know we have uh, issues around storage transport cold chain farm gate processing units so so there are uh, several issues in fact uh, this pandemic due lockdowns during pandemic uh, was a reminder to disruptions in food supply chains and there were several lessons to be uh, learned how we manage our food supply chains uh, so it is a complex problem that could need interventions at uh, multiple levels given that india is unique uh, in terms of both production system consumption patterns uh, uh, so we need maybe more systematic research more innovation more policy and investment decisions based on data but i would like to emphasize on partnerships we need more coordinated partnerships uh, for managing uh, food loss in food loss and waste in india uh, because of the diversity uh, we have uh, in the country uh there are several organizations already offering so many innovative solutions we have now decentralized uh, storage solution which are both economic and uh, uh, environment friendly we have several organizations coming up with artificial intelligence uh, solutions uh, to deal with fragmented uh, supply chains and all that but overall i think we need more coordinated partnerships uh, if you want to address the scale of uh, problem that we have uh, in india uh everyone has a role in reducing uh, food loss and waste in india food means so much more it is politics it is environment it is culture food is money so i think we need everyone to make it uh, their business to reduce food loss and waste in india only then it is possible and uh, there are a lot of things that we need to do but i think all this can fall in place only we have uh, when we have partnerships and uh, relationships uh, based on evidence so what can we do now maybe uh, sustainable development goal 12.3 is an entry point 
and uh, we can contribute to worldwide momentum on reducing food loss in waste in India as well as uh, look at what's happening in India. And perhaps uh, Friends of Champions is a good opportunity to foster relationships and uh, partnerships and to bring about a change in how we are dealing with uh, food loss and waste in India. Uh, we'll hear from Liz uh, on more about Friends of Champions 12.3 in the uh, next session. Uh, so with this, I end my presentation. Thank you and over to you, Ruchika. Thank you, Monica, for uh, giving an overview of uh, you know how food loss and waste is complex and has multiple dimensions, and we need to think about multiple levers and how we kind of address this. I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Liz Goodwin, who is WRI's first senior fellow and director of food loss and waste. Liz also serves as chair of the London Waste and Recycling Board and comes with more than three decades of experience. Liz is a champion and very passionate about SDG 12.3, whose aim is to have food waste around the globe. Prior to WRI, Liz was CEO of Waste and Resources Action Program, or WRAP, and during her leadership, UK recycling rates increased from 9% to 43%. Food waste was reduced by 21% in the five years, and several groundbreaking agreements and campaigns were born and flourished. In 2015, Liz was awarded an OBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours List, for services to the business resource efficiency and the environment. Couldn't have thought of a better person to introduce Friends of Champion 12.3 in India. Over to you, Liz. You have about 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Um, I think Monica's going to share my slides. Thank you. And um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. And it's so exciting to have um, uh, be talking about a sort of potential to develop a, a network of, of friends and people focused on food loss and waste in, in India. Um, so if we can go to the first slide. So as we've already heard, you know, food loss and waste is, is a huge problem. It represents about a third of all the food is lost or wasted between production and our plates. And that costs the global economy nearly a trillion dollars every year. Global food loss and waste represents 8% of greenhouse gas emissions um, you know, that's an astonishing figure and most countries and most people don't recognize that uh, the size of that figure and the fact that it is something that we can all do something about. And as a result of all that food loss and waste, we're wasting a quarter of the water that goes into agriculture. So the next slide. And as, as we've also heard, you know, food loss and waste happens in, along the entire value chain, right through from production, handling and storage, processing, packaging, distribution market, and consumption. And the report that Monica just talked about, um, the UNEP report from this year, that really started to highlight the fact that there is actually quite a lot of food waste happening at the consumption stage, where I think most people had previously thought it was all elsewhere in the supply chain. Um, the next slide. And Again, as you've heard, you know, if it was a country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter. And just to put that number into context, that's about six or seven times um, the amount of greenhouse gas emissions associated with aviation. So you can see that, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge problem and something we ought to be trying to do something about. And at the same time, the world um, is, has got a huge number of people um, malnourished. One in, pe one in nine people globally go to bed hungry every day. And you know, we've therefore got this um, start startling issue of wasting a third of our food and yet having so many people malnourished. Um, and actually, in addition to that, we've also got an obesity crisis in many, many countries. So we've got lots of problems with our food system. Um, but food loss and waste is, is, a, is a key um, solution that we, we ought to be trying to do something about. And my next slide. And there are, as, as we've heard, there are some real benefits from reducing food loss and waste. Um, you know, from a social point of view, it, it, you know, many farmers are smallholder farmers. Uh, they're producing the food that is at the start of many supply chains. And this would help improve food security for a growing population and help to feed hungry people now. Um, Environmentally, clearly, it's, it protects resources, protects land, protects biodiversity, and it contributes to reducing climate change. And of course, it improves efficiency. It makes all those smallholder farmers far more efficient. It avoids unnecessary costs, and it generates new revenue. So there are massive benefits from tackling food loss and waste. And the next slide. And 
And actually, the problem is just getting worse. You know, we're, we're forecast to have a growing population, nearly 10 billion by 2050. Um, and if we're going to, to manage that growth in population, we'd need 56% more food with our current food system. That means we need um, to, you know, if we want to avoid um, increasing the amount of land we use, we would need to save an area the size of India, twice the size of India. Um, you know, the, the thoughts of the amount of extra food or the amount of um, improvements we need to make to the food system are, are gargantuan. And to meet climate targets, we need to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, from the food system by 67%. So those are some quite challenging um, targets that we've got to do, but reducing food loss and waste can help all of those issues. And my next slide. <clears throat> And as you've already heard, we've, all, we've obviously already got um, SDG target 12.3, right, which is all about halving food waste at retail and consumer and re reducing food losses um, throughout the supply chain. And I'm a champion for SDG 12.3, and that basically means I'm part of a coalition that's really trying to, I mean, I spend my life trying to make sure that we're trying to be, make sure that we're on track to achieve that goal of halving food waste um, and trying to in encourage and support others to do so. And we've developed a strategy in the next slide, a strategy for um, tackling food loss and waste, which is based really simple. It's target, measure, act. So if you set the target, it sets your ambition, it says you're, you're serious about this and it motivates people. Um, then the most important, and I, I, you know, if, it, if there was one thing that people should do, it's measurement. Um, if you measure something, you know where your problems are and it, measurement means that something gets managed. And that will then drive action. And you can do, you can apply Target Measure Act anywhere along the supply chain, right from production, through handling, processing, all the way through to consumption. And the next slide. And an increasing number of companies are doing exactly that. So this, you'll probably recognize some of the brands on this, or some of the names, um, but, and this data is, this uh, graph, graph, is always, graph is always out of date because there are more and more companies setting targets and measuring and seeing the financial benefits of doing so. And the next slide. And I, met, I met, mentioned measurement earlier and the importance, and that actually came up when Monica was talking about the fact that we still don't have enough data about where the problems are. But measurement really allows you to understand the size of the opportunity. It allows you to identify where the hotspots are. You know, have you got a real problem in a packing shed or have you really got a problem um, somewhere else in the, in the supply chain? And it, if you start now, it allows you to set a baseline and then you can track pro progress um, over, over time. And you can also benchmark yourselves against others. So coming back to the idea of having a, a network in India, wouldn't it be great if, you, if um, organizations in India were able to benchmark it themselves against others to say, okay, so are we doing, we're all doing as well as each other or who could do better and can we learn from each other? And the next one. And um, the other thing Monica mentioned was about the differences in approaches and the lack of standards. There is a food loss and waste um, reporting standard that has been developed by a whole range of organizations um, globally, which is increasingly being used by companies and is in fact used by pretty much all the companies on that previous slide. And it, it's not a um, prescriptive way of how you measure, but it provides a common language um, and a common framework so that we're all measuring the same things. We're measuring um, food that goes to animal feed. We're measuring food that goes to landfill. We're, we're trying to um, being able to compare um, apples with apples instead of comparing apples with pears from you know, different me measurement approaches. And the next slide. And I, and I often get asked when I'm, when I'm talking about food loss and waste by companies and organizations um, you know there are lots of problems and concerns about actually starting and I think these are just some of the some of the really common ones you know people say it's not relevant for me waste is part of doing business it's it's you know it's it's not much but it's you know it's it's manageable and um, you know it's going to happen anyway that's not true measurement will demonstrate that there have been some companies who've made the most astonishing um, improvements just by starting to measure and suddenly finding they've got a big problem somewhere. And it's a really simple action that, that is required to address it. And all of a sudden they aren't wasting that amount of food and it's gone straight to their bottom line. 
Um, people worry about the cost and time required to do something. There is a clear business case, and I'll talk about that in a minute, um, you know, that it, it does make good business sense to, to stop wasting food and, and losing food. Um, people think there are too many other important things to do. That is obviously true. You know, when you're running a business, you've got an awful lot of um, balls up in the air. Um, but um, I think the financial benefits, as well as the environmental and the social benefits, mean that it is imperative and there aren't many more important things to do. And then people also don't know where to start. Um, and I think really measurement is the is the starting point. And if, if you're concerned about measurement and how to do it, it doesn't matter. Just just get started and, and you'll improve your ways of measurement over time. Um, just making a start is the important thing. And then the other, the other, another common question is problems are caused by others and not me, my organisation. It's always, it's always those people down the supply chain or my customers. Um, and that's why partnerships and collaboration and communication up and down the supply chain is key. And Monica talked about that, but, you know, the importance of partnerships, because you can actually collaborate and you can share information. And you can actually know whether your decisions are, are affecting somebody else in the supply chain and vice versa. And the next slide. I, I mentioned that there's a business case. We, we looked across um, 700 companies, um, across nearly 1,200 business sites across 17 countries. And um, on the next slide, we, we were trying to work, understand, you know, these are all companies who had taken action on food loss and waste. And this was the analysis of the financial benefits that they had seen. So the median company got a 14 to one investment return. So they invested $1, they got $14 back. Um, and um, I think it was 99% um, of companies in that study actually saw a, a financial return, um, but this was what the median was. Um, and an, the vast majority of the investments required were either very low cost or no cost at all. They were typically a few thousand dollars to actually yield some of those returns. And there were simple things, you know, measurement, training staff, improving inventory management, changing packaging. And it all sort of, um, it's, it, it, I think the, the companies involved in those, they're all still, still doing it because they've seen the benefits and they want to carry on. And my last slide. So, my suggestion, um, because I'm a champion for 12.3, is that we try to set up a network of friends of champions, 12.3, in India. Um, and that would give you um, a, a network in India who could, um, you know, you could set up a, um, a, a chat um, area on the website and you could um, talk to each other about the experiences you've got. It's a really simple process. You just fill in a form. We give you a Friends of Champions logo. Uh, you'd get the monthly newsletter we produce. You'd be part of a global network, but also have the ability to set up a local network. And that would allow you to share back this, uh, share learning and best practice. Um, so that would be my encouragement. Start measuring and become a friend of Champions 12.3. Thank you. I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Will. Um, Liz. Um, for talking about how measurement is uh, critical and important to identify where to start from when we are thinking about reducing food loss and waste. And can a network come together to solve the problem? And there is a business case to reduce food loss and waste and salience and importance of partnerships, networks, and communications. We're delighted to hear more on this um, by in, in, you know, basically inviting two discussions now um, on the presentations that have been made. Our first discussion is Mr. Ellen Krishna, who heads the regional hotspots, key accounts, communication and industry affairs at Denfoss India. With the leadership focus on business development and knowledge positioning, he's one of the key members to support the company's continued growth in the country. Krishna is a member of the CII National Task Force on Post Harvest Logistics and Cold Chain, CII Energy Efficiency Council, member of the uh, Me Mechanical Engineering Standards Committee at BIS and plays an active role in the energy efficiency committees of various industry and governance forums. Prior to Danfoss, he has worked in several leadership positions at ABB and Yes Bank and also before his corporate career served in the Indian Navy uh, for eight years. 
Krishna, we are delighted to invite you to reflect on Friends of Champion 12.3 in India and provide additional context to the role of private sector in managing food loss in India. You have about seven to eight minutes to reflect on, reflect on this. Over to you, Krishna. Yeah, thank you, Ruchika, and uh, thanks for the nice introduction as well. Uh, it's my pleasure to uh, be a part of uh, this discussion. Uh, like you mentioned, uh, I work for Danfoss here. And uh, uh, I have worked earlier with Liz on uh, with, with uh, the Friends of Champion and some of the reports which uh, Liz asked us to review and uh, really comprehensive work that uh, Friends of Champions has been doing. And uh, I'm very glad to know that uh, now uh, Friends of Champions have a lot more focus on India where uh, uh, some of the numbers that were projected by Liz and Monica earlier, while they are now about four or five years uh, old, but the numbers haven't uh, changed drastically, but things have improved a little bit, uh, I would say. Uh, reflecting on what uh, uh, Liz presented and uh, looking at it from the perspective of uh, what we have been working on, I will share some of my experiences of uh, what uh, we have done and uh, why uh, arresting food loss and waste is important. Now, when we look at food loss and waste, while SDG 12.3 indicates uh, how and that, that we need to reduce the food loss and waste, but arresting food loss and waste has an impact on multiple other SDGs, like what Liz was also mentioning that it has an effect on water because food loss directly contributes to wasting water. And in India, 80% of the water that we use goes into agriculture. So you, if you're wasting one third of the food, you, it directly correlates to that you're wasting one third of the water that you're using for agriculture. So that SDG also get, gets addressed. And when, when we were trying to uh, look at the SDGs and seeing how can cold chain or food loss reducing food loss and waste, which are all the SDGs that will get in, uh, impacted, at least eight of the 17 SDGs have a direct correlation with this. So it, it becomes all the more important as to why we need to look at uh, addressing the food loss. The other aspect that comes into play, which was also there in one of Liz's slide, is on nutrition. And when we look at uh, the... Uh, a lot of uh, what is consumed in rural India, while a lot of people do have food on the plate, but the food is largely either rice, wheat, and some cereals, but you don't see any greens or horticulture products or vegetables, fruits on their plate, which is very important from a nutritional point of view. And how do we enable this rural population access to these kind of products so that they are able to have better nutrition and the nutrition deficit is reduced. So that, that's an important arena that comes into play. And when we look at uh, uh, how cold chain has penetrated in India, even today, the penetration levels of cold chain in India is about between five to 7%. And even if we don't compare it with the developed countries and look at uh, even our neighbors like China, where the penetration levels are about 30%. That doesn't mean India needs to aspire to become 30% because it is not necessary that cold chain has to come in uh, in every place because cold chain needs to come in only where the produce needs to move beyond a particular distance. If, if your demand markets are around your production centers, you need not necessarily need cold chain. But the challenge that what we have seen is the producers are not able to exactly understand what the demand centers are and whether they are producing as per the demand. A lot of the food loss that also comes into play is because the demand and supply are not matched. Invariably, you are, you are producing something more and more of which, which may not be the exact demand in the market. And that's, that's an arena that we need to look at if we have to also look at addressing uh, food loss. 
when I when I look at our own experience of what we have kind of learned in, in, in the last 10 years that we have been working, when we started working on addressing food loss, we basically thought that if we can get FDI into India, the investors will come and set up all the warehouse infrastructure, all that is required, and this will get arrested. And like we know that uh, opportunity is available. Uh, foreign investors can come and set up all the infrastructure, back-end infrastructure in agriculture that is required. 100% is permitted. But that didn't solve the problem. The second way that we thought was a lot of subsidies will, if we can enable subsidies to come into the play because investments were a challenge and people are not able to invest into cold chain infrastructure, that will solve the challenge. But we do know now that there are multiple uh, programs available from the government which uh, subsidize uh, coal chain infrastructure. But we also realized that even that did not actually enable it because a lot of people took advantage of the subsidies and set up infrastructure, which was not being utilized. And that is when we took a different approach where we looked at one crop per state and decided to look at, okay, let's see what this crop has to do and we chose apples for Himachal Pradesh, bananas for Tamil Nadu, potatoes for West Bengal, pineapples for Kerala, pomegranates for Karnataka. What we did was we first prepared a comprehensive report like what you have done on food loss and waste as to what, what, what it is. We took an approach as to what needs to be done for banana as Tamil Nadu, taking the example of banana. We saw that the losses were to the tune of 30%. And the farm gate price was about five to seven rupees. We took this report to the government and said, this is what it is, tell us what we have to do. The government then directed us, go to the agriculture university because even we, we can't help you here. And the agriculture university then directed us to some farmers saying that go speak to these farmers. And they arranged a meeting with the farmers because farmers generally do not come uh, very easily to the private sector forthcomingly. So they arranged a meeting and when we met the farmers, the farmers first needed to be educated on the fact that it is not that if they produce 130% has to be wasted or lost in, in transit. So they, they, they were first need to be educated on that aspect. Once they had to be educated on that, then they were told what is it that they have to do. And it took us a period, I will not take, uh, it, it's a long story if I have to tell the entire journey of 10 years, but uh, uh, putting it in context, what happened over a period of five years was the banana farmers over a period of multiple stakeholder meetings across the state and organizing yearly banana festivals, a lot of farmers understood the benefit of investing in infrastructure as well as how can they come together and form an alliance? So even before the FPO policy and all of this was coming in from the central government, the banana farmers formed a, a banana farmers group and they started coming together and they started looking at how can we take advantage of this scale of we coming together. And once this was established somewhere in 2000, uh, 16, it has taken about four to five years of continuously working with this FPO to make them understand how they need to work as a business. So FPOs, we do see, will play a major role here because of the fragmented nature of the farmers that are there. And today the banana farmers in Tamil Nadu are able to get a farm gate price, which is three times the price that they were getting earlier at least pre-COVID. COVID has impacted uh, the farmers in a very different way in terms of the farm price. But pre-COVID, they were able to get three times the price. So while arresting food loss definitely helps in achieving us the SDGs, but it directly impacts the livelihood of farmers. And you are able to also get a larger produce onto the market, which enables the consumer. Because, you, because if there is a larger produce on the market, you will be able to bet, get a better quality of the food as well as at a better price. So these are some of the learnings uh, that we have, but as we see moving forward, what, what should the uh, private sector look at? 
the way we see it is that uh, it has to be a collaborative work of all stakeholders involved. At least that's that's what we have learned through the work that we have done in multiple states. The private sector, the government, agri universities, which are largely working uh, independently, they need to be brought on board. There are a lot of research centers for different crops that have been set up in India who have done phenomenal work. We need to get uh, those research institutes on board. And together, we need to look at how can we work together, especially on the bottom of the uh, chain here with the farmers. Because if the farmers get educated, then they will start producing what is required in the market. We need to connect them with the market. The, the infrastructure that is required to do this will automatically come into play rather than creating the infrastructure which we may or may not do it the right way. So I would, I would say that a collaborative work is required between multiple stakeholders here to look at the challenge. And we have seen success uh, here if we are able to connect uh, the, the demand centers with the suppliers. And uh, that I would say is the way forward uh, to look at while setting uh, targets on reducing food loss. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Krishna, um, for sharing your experience and journey on food loss and waste and how it's good for both environment and different strategies that may have to be employed from, you know, that you also looked at from one crop per stage, uh, per stage to, you know, farmer strategies and incentives that are needed and how do we sort of bring a network together. I am now delighted to introduce Srijit Sen Gupta, who is the CEO of the Center for Responsible Business and has over 20 years of experience in various areas of sustainable development policy and practice across Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. Rijit's interest lies in interface of business and society, particularly environmental protection management, consumer welfare, community welfare, livelihoods, business reg regulations, SDGs, and of course, uh, responsible business. He's designed and implemented various projects programs uh, in these areas and is a member of advisory board of the Trade for Sustainable Business Program, International Trade Center, Geneva, and the Consumer Information Program of the One Planet Network. Rijit, if you could reflect a bit on the discussion so far and provide additional context to challenges in the Indian business sector and role of multi-stakeholder partnerships in managing food loss and waste. You have about seven to eight minutes to reflect as a discussion. Over to you, Rijit. Thanks a lot, Ruchika, and uh, an absolute pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation and uh, for inviting the uh, Center for Responsible Business. Um, I think a lot of, uh, I'm going to echo a lot of uh, things that have already been spoken uh, on the topic uh, by Monica and, uh, and, uh, and Liz and, and Krishna. Um, um, but in, 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 instead of uh, repeating some of the things that they have mentioned, uh, I think what, uh, as an organization, uh, Center for Responsible Business, uh, has been advocating the need for multi-stakeholder uh, sustainability solutions. Um, so I think my intervention would be essentially focused on looking at these two elements. One is uh, you know, the, the involvement and the engagement of multi -stakeholder, multiple stakeholders uh, on one hand and on the other uh, to focus on the solutions uh, specifically. Um, and I think there are two or three uh, issues uh, that that I'd like to share uh, with the group here. So uh, CRB has also done uh, some research and review of the current <clears throat> food loss and waste uh, scenario in India. Uh, and that has been done specifically from our uh, work on sustainable value chains and also uh, touching a little bit about on, on, on the, the issue of uh, circular economy. Um, sort of leaning back onto that work, I think, uh, and based on what we've heard already, um, I think there are two or three broad set of stakeholders who are critical for uh, for finding or co-creating uh, solutions uh, to, to this very complex problem as, as Monica underlined. Um, first of all, let us look at the first sort of bucket uh, um, in terms of, in terms of uh, you know, action and, and, and solutions both. 
um, and that first bucket is essentially of of, of policy. So the first uh, issue is that, um, as far as India is concerned, we don't have uh, a food waste, uh, food loss and waste policy uh, as yet. We do have a, a, a draft uh, resource efficiency policy, uh, which sort of touches very very thinly on 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 food. Uh, uh, related waste, um, but definitely there is a need for um, a, a dedicated policy uh, attention to the problem of food loss and waste, especially given the nature of the problem and the and the impacts. And I really liked uh, you know what Monica mentioned uh, earlier, and I think Liz had also highlighted uh, you know this whole linkage between food loss on one side and and malnutrition on the other. Um, which is which is which is very very important. So the first point really is about looking at uh, you know uh, high, identifying or sort of advocating the government for a food loss and waste policy. The second is you know what we have also seen is that there are a number of uh, organs of the government which are involved in this uh, on this issue and have you know various policy schemes programs uh, on uh, looking at or having implication on food loss and waste. Uh, however, we feel that there is a need for better coordination amongst them. And uh, you know that that remains a problem often in a country like India because of the federal system, um, you know, agriculture being a state subject and, and, and so on and so forth. But it is probably useful to create some sort of a, a centralized coordination system um, um, which uh, all the different actors uh, uh, in the regulatory, on the policy and the regulatory framework can sort of uh, collaborate and engage. The third is about the interface between uh, food loss and waste and uh, the SDG 12.3. And when we looked at the SDG 12.3 uh, national indicators, you will see that there is a predominance uh, or a, there's an inclination towards uh, rice and wheat, as has historically been in, in case of uh, India. Um, so there is probably a need for more sharper uh, sort of uh, design of indicators to also help um, the government measure uh, the, the performance of the states, uh, as well as, as businesses, which the government is doing already. So the first First bucket really is about policy, and I think there one of the most important sort of tool, uh, based on you know on these three four different issues would be to uh, would be to one add you know sort of uh, advocate based on evidence uh, that we have or don't, and secondly uh, to also identify the relevant um, uh, uh, relevant people in the government and and, and create that kind of a a government engagement or a public engagement process. So that's the first sort of uh, bucket uh, in terms of the solutions. The second, you know, which you know Krishna also spoke about, uh, and I think Liz also touched on, was about the private sector. And uh, I think uh, as as uh, what we've done also at CRB is, um, of course, uh, uh, we feel very very strongly that uh, you know businesses need to be engaged. Uh, much better with the whole uh, sustainable development goals agenda in India. Uh, and there, is, there are some processes which are already happening. There are some front runners, there are some laggards, so on and so forth. So this also calls for a fair bit of capacity building of the businesses um, and not just capacity building on a subject, but capacity building uh, on, on, the, on really the business case uh, for addressing the problem of food loss and waste, which I, which we feel has not really been done. So identifying um, the business case for food loss and waste, especially whether it, you know, across, whether it is, um, you know, companies which are involved in, in, uh, the, in the food uh, uh, business from a retail perspective or companies which are providing uh, inputs uh, or even services, uh, etc., um, can also be uh, can also be engaged. Uh, the financial sector also, uh, you know, which which plays a very very key role uh, in India through its uh, through uh, priority sector lending, can also perhaps uh, be uh, encouraged 
to look at uh, the uh, this problem. Um, uh, the second, uh, in terms of identifying the business case, the second uh, element of capacity building is, you know, what I mentioned earlier, what we've started to do. Uh, and Liz, it's very good to hear about RAP's work. Um, uh, uh, some of your ex-colleagues are good friends, Mark Barthel and, uh, and, and Claire Neller um, from the One Planet. We have at, we've been together at the One Planet Network. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that we've also uh, sort of uh, uh, realized is that the principles of circular economy can also be utilized for identifying uh, sort of actions that the uh, private sector can take. Um, and and uh, as, as, uh, uh, as uh, I think uh, was mentioned earlier, it is critical that um, we feel perhaps the, 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 the understanding on the, the principles of circular economy can also help in businesses uh, understand uh, you know, and, and, uh, the, the, the magnitude of the problem. Um, and the last point, which I think Krishna also mentioned under private sector is better integration into sustainable value chains, uh, especially looking at the, uh, you know, the, the concerns or the interest of the small uh, smallholders and, and, and uh, even the farmers producers organizations given this big push uh, by the government on, on FPOs. So that's the second bucket and very, very quickly in a few seconds, Ruchika, I know my time is uh, over. Um, the third bucket is about the other stakeholders. And I think there are three or four critical issues there. One is again, that uh, there is a need for a, for a full-fledged campaign uh, on, on uh, you know, maybe even uh, at a wider public, uh, uh, to engage with the wider public on this whole issue of building awareness on food loss and waste, especially the magnitude and, and how it can be, how it can be addressed by each one of us, uh, you know, starting from one. Uh, the second is about, um, I think, uh, again, Krishna mentioned about it, doing some pilots and there are some pilots on specific crops. So, that, you know, that's probably another way of building some confidence in the system that, you know, some solutions can work. And, and thirdly, I think I like the point that Liz made about benchmarking. So, you know, getting research organizations and, and NGOs uh, to talk about uh, benchmarking. So I think these are sort of three sets of solutions or actions uh, which can really help in getting the stakeholders together. And as, as you probably are already aware, uh, CRB uh, convenes and, and manages a number of multi-stakeholder uh, sustainability platforms and initiatives, and we'll be happy to, to support that process for the Friends of 12.3 uh, initiative. So, so thanks, thanks again for the opportunity. I'll, I'll stop here. Thanks, uh, Rajit. I think that uh, you're quite, uh, you know, important interventions, and especially how they also connect with what was, uh, you know, what Liz and uh, Krishna were talking about earlier. Uh, couple of important points that definitely came out was, you know, how do we think about linkages between food loss, waste and nutrition? We all agree that that's very important, specifically, especially when we think about post-pandemic recovery. Of course, how do we identify and advocate for a food loss waste policy in India? How do we think about building businesses, you know, get big businesses involved in that? What sort of a capacity building is required around those issues? And last, more importantly, you know, it has to be in campaign mode, creating more awareness and all of us would have a role to play in that. Uh, well, like, I don't think so. I have, uh, you know, this is a good time to actually get a bit more into question answer sessions. And uh, uh, I'm delighted to introduce Dr. Jehri KM, who works on the Food and Land Use Coalition as an India country coordinator. His primary responsibility as follow uh, coordinator is to coordinate the Polo India activities, working cl very closely with Polo India core partners and collaborators, which include, uh, of course, WRI India, CEW, Terry, uh, RRAN, and our able partners, uh, IMM, the and Nikki Sat. And prior to his current role as Polo India country coordinator, Jerry has worked in different capacities with WRI India, Kerala Forest Research Institute, WWF India, Windrock International, uh, till 2015, uh, focusing on natural resource management and biodiversity con conservation. He's initiated and implemented many conservation programs in Western Ghats and Eastern Himalayas. Jerry was also executive director of Sejeevan during 2015 to 17. Jerry is a PhD in forestry from FRI Dehradun, and I'm delighted to hand over now 
to you, Jairi, for moderating the rest of the session. Over to you. Thanks, th thanks, Ruchika. Uh, thanks for thanks for a you know, nice introduction too. Uh, actually, you know, uh, there are several questions in the Q and A box. I can com compile it and you know direct towards uh, towards the speakers. Uh, but a couple of minutes before, actually, we uh, you know we have invited Mr. S. Vijay Kumar, the Polu India lead, who uh, who, who was a 1970s batch IAS officer. Uh, who served uh, many years in the ministries and government of India as the Secretary of Rural Development and in many other positions, uh, he is basically the lead of Polu India. Would like to come for you know two minutes. We thought of uh, you know bringing him on, making the conclusions. Rather, he said just two minutes. He will talk and you know before the QA starts. Vijay, over to you. Oh, thanks, uh, Jayhari, and apologies uh, to all of you uh, for slightly sort of changing uh, the structure. Actually, I had another commitment, but I didn't want to lose this, so I came in. So I, uh, I am giving the honor of making the, the concluding remarks to Jayhari because I came in in the middle, so I haven't heard all the all the speakers. I came in as Liz was uh, speaking. So I have missed Monica a bit and Liz a bit. So I don't want to be unfair and do the concluding remarks, but uh, I take this opportunity to actually uh, raise an issue which I have not heard raised uh, earlier uh, or, or followed up in a structured manner in the food loss and waste uh, uh, um, you know, discussions and conversations. And, and it's peculiar, I think, to India, Asia, and Africa, and perhaps uh, Latin America, in other words, the developing world. That is the issue of non-loss, non-waste. And by that, I mean that the food loss and waste, as is commonly discussed in developed countries, is looking at the portion that is not consumed. But in developing countries, there is a substantial portion of food that is not meeting a standard, but is consumed and therefore is not treated as loss or is not treated as waste. But it needs to be recognized, monitored, measured, because just as we uh, would like to measure loss and waste and put in place policies and strategies to reduce the loss and waste, we should be looking to see what needs to be done to reduce the that portion of food which is sub uh, substandard but is consumed in developing countries by the people who are poor and therefore are willing uh, uh, to consume substandard, maybe even uh, non-nutritious, maybe even uh, you know, possibly contaminated food because uh, that is all they can afford. And this applies to food grains, for instance, that is stored uh, in, in uh, conditions that uh, you know, are not uh, conducive to proper storage of food grains. A lot of food in F FCI and other go-downs uh, actually, uh, you know, is, is in very poor condition, uh, but there are people who pick it up and eat it. The same applies to, uh, you know, more perishable food, uh, including fruits and vegetables. There is a huge market for damaged vegetables, damaged fruits. Uh, and uh, I presume that it is actually being uh, recorded as food that is consumed rather than food that is either lost or wasted, whereas Really speaking, in a developed country, that would not be consumed and it would be treated as food loss or food waste. We need to recognize this because if we don't, we are sweeping under the, the carpet many practices which are contributing to this, which may actually be larger than the practices relating to real loss and real waste, which we will be tackling. So in other words, we need to go below the tip of the iceberg that we are discussing so far uh, generally and look at this other issue. And it is possible that there may be 
commonality of reasons uh, between uh, between the latter and and the former which we generally discuss and if so it would uh, help actually prioritize both investment and policy uh, uh, in order to ensure that we really tackle the waste and loss in the larger context of uh, healthy diets for for all, all all citizens of the country so i i uh, I heard some of the speakers, you know, and in the context of resource efficiency or circularity of the economy, uh, I think this fits in uh, absolutely uh, well that, you know, the, the uh, resource efficiency must uh, treat the resource uh, with the respect it deserves. And, uh, and therefore you should treat it as a complete resource, not as a damaged resource uh, on which there is a discount. Uh, and, and so I will stop here, but just leave this thought that we need to uh, look at one other dimension, particularly relevant to developing countries, which is food that is not wasted, not lost, but is not, not of the appropriate standard. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks Vijay. Thanks a lot for bringing that uh quality, nutrition, and health connect to the food loss and waste, especially in the Indian uh, scenario. It is, a, it is a very important point. Thanks a lot for that. So there are questions in the Q&A. Uh, so I'm just uh, getting in, uh, in, in in the order in which the presenters have, uh, you know, presented it. And also, I think we may little overshoot the timing. Maybe, uh, Ruchika, will it be OK? Uh, maybe 10 minutes or somewhere? Uh, Yes, I hope all the panelists can stay as well. Yes, uh, looking at the panelists. So, so uh, Liz, there is actually a question to you which has an answer. Like at the global level, we have understood about the GHI, the, the GHG, the Global uh, Greenhouse Gas Emission from FLW. Is there any data about India? Uh, probably uh, Liz can start it and Monica also can fit in to answer the question because Monica knows much about the Indian scenario. Thank you. Um, I mean, it's an interesting question. I, um, Monica may know better than me, but I don't think there are any India specific numbers. Um, I think that the, num the global figure was generated based on a lot of assumptions and um, extrapolation. So I think what you'd have to do is actually look at back at FAO information about, you know, the, the amount of food loss and waste happening in India and then use that to calculate it. But I don't, I don't know whether Monica knows anything more than that. Monica, uh, over to you. And Monica, before, before you pitch in, there, there is another question which you may be uh, interested to answer. Like, uh, there's a question from Chanel about, is there any study after 2014 research study in India, a comprehensive one? You may attend that as well. Actually, the answer to both is related. So in India, uh, the CIFIT study remains the most quoted study and uh, the data also is used mostly from this study on uh, food loss and waste. So uh, I will again uh, refer to the research that we have been doing, which we are going to launch uh, next month in the form of working paper. It was actually a, a very comprehensive literature review of existing data on food loss and waste. So what we found was uh, when it comes to environment impacts of food loss and waste, including GHGs, uh, there are just I think two or three studies who have tried to quantify it and it was only based on this CIFET uh, study and rice and sugarcane was the biggest uh, in that sense contributor but uh, I will encourage uh, all of you to actually get hold of the working paper when it comes out uh, next year for more data on whatever is there. And uh, again, uh, other than CIFET study, there are uh, several ICR studies, agriculture universities, there are several research centers on specific crops, uh, like Krishna was mentioning. So there are other studies, more updated studies available, but they're very small scale uh, focused on a specific geography or on specific uh, crops. CIFET is the only national level assessment. I think that answers. Thanks, Monica. Liz, there is another question you may be you may like to answer. Like, uh, is there any country case study on addressing food waste and loss effectively that can be studied for a, as a lesson to adopt or, and 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 also to adopt? Is I think I would case? like Liz to answer that question if that's okay. Because Liz, yeah, yeah. I'm, asking, I'm asking Liz only. I'm asking Liz. Only. Yeah. 
Sorry, which what was the question? Which one was it? Oh, any country? Any country case study yes. can be considered as a global case study or a or a or a or a you know golden case which can be adopted. Um, well, um, certainly, but in the U the UK has done a lot. Um, there are a few countries, but they're all they're all um, European countries. The ones that have done most are the UK, um, Netherlands, and Denmark. Um, but I would I would caveat that by saying they've all focused pretty much on um, household food waste, consumer waste, and um, and working through the retailers back through the supply chain. They haven't done a lot on food loss, and I think that's one of the issues. Um, that there are still very few concrete examples of countries actually taking action on um, food loss. I mean, there are examples obviously out there where specific crops have been tackled or specific countries have done particular things. Um, but it, we come back to this whole issue of, of data. Um, in, interesting, I've been talking to one or two countries recently, and you know they're, they're in exactly the same position as you, don't have enough data, they're going to have to try to find out their their baseline um, on loss and on waste. So in the supply chain and more at the retail and household end. Um, so, but yes, you know, I was chief executive of RAP and I was very proud of all the stuff we did on household food waste. We reduced household food waste by 21% when I was there. So, um, but that was largely about behavior change programs um, combined with uh, retailers doing things which helped householders. So things like advice on storage, advice on um, portion sizes, and, and I mean, the advice on storage was particularly relevant and making things, date labels clearer. So it was, it was, um, it was a whole concerted campaign, but it's, it's, uh, it's missing the whole food loss piece. Thanks, Grace, thanks. Uh, Krishna, actually, there is an interesting question to you, like, you know, a continuation of, uh, uh, you know, a, a kind of a point which emerged from some statement you have made. In fact, you may, you know, you, you are telling that there's a 30% waste and the farmers may need to be aware about the scope of making that into livelihood and, uh, you know, and, and, and also the penetration level is very less as far as this cold chain uh, infrastructure is concerned in India. Uh, amidst the whole investments are available and the investment scenarios have been built. So the question is why the investors are not making this 30% as a business opportunity. And second is like you spoke about the coordinated uh, requirement of coordinated efforts to uh, efforts in making the farmers aware and uh, getting this uh, food loss managed. But what is the major lever which needs to be addressed by this uh, you know uh, coordinated efforts? So these two two questions to you. You are muted, Krishna. You, you can't hear yeah, thanks. I just realized that. Thanks, Jerry. Very interesting question. Uh, uh, see, when you look at it from an investor point of view, any investor will put in money as long as he knows that he is going to get his returns. And the money is available. It is not a question of money. The, the point is, what we need to understand is that the business model needs to be right. And wherever we have seen the business models to be right, the investors have come in or the money has come in, or people who are coming up with that business model have been able to raise money. So why there is a low cold chain penetration? The answer would be that the market is fragmented. The supply chain models are disconnected. We need to have a linkage in the market. We need to connect the suppliers with the demand centers. One example would be the Kino fruit in Himachal Pradesh, where the farmers were throwing that fruit on the streets because they were not able to sell it. But by connecting them to markets like Bangalore and Chennai today, all that was done was they were just told that this market is available. The reefer trucks that were required today, the farmers and whoever is trying to connect the markets, they are investing in those reefer trucks. And the fruit that was being dropped on the uh, roads in Himachal, today is being sold at 80 rupees, uh, 85 rupees uh, in Bangalore and Chennai markets, the same fruit. You need to be able to connect them. The other aspects that are there is frozen versus fresh food, 
the processing levels are low the awareness and skill at the farm level which i spoke of where you need to educate the farmers on why they need to invest in cold chain infrastructure it is not the other way around that you invest in an infrastructure and ask them to use it because unless they don't know why they have to use it and how they have to use it and how it will benefit them it is not going to enable them that's that's a process that we have to look at as to how do we do that and that's where the multi stakeholder in uh involvement that rajit spoke about comes into play and all this together will enable us to have a better penetration and move the value chain upwards thanks krishna that clarifies that really clarifies it uh, rajit there are a couple of questions to you uh one directly addressed to you and another i think you can take the first one is basically the what are the present policy provisions that can be leveraged Uh, to improve the farmers understanding and capacity you now building uh, uh, for uh, food, managing food loss and waste the second is are there any successful case of private sector or companies already you know uh, getting into this flw scenario and 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 you know operating successfully so for instance good practices on what being done to avoid food loss and waste in supermarkets grocery stores kind of uh, you know scenario so please Yeah, over to you, Vijay. Yeah, th- thanks for those questions, Jerry. Uh, I think maybe just before I answer those two questions, a couple of points to reflect on, based on what has uh, what I have heard. Um, what I understand, Monica, and I need to check this is that there is a study which is being just about in- being initiated by NABARD, uh, looking at food loss and waste. Uh, I don't know the details, but it has just been initiated. and they are looking at about 47 crops is what i understand but i need to check that with the uh, you know with with the, the the contact person it is a follow up again this would be the third round uh, really so but I'll, i'll 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 check that and i'll get back to you i i know this from pretty reliable sources uh, also i think you know the the question about policy now <sighs> it's a very complex uh, subject um, and i think we've made it even more complicated by clubbing these two elements of food loss and waste together um, and the reason i'm saying this is that the by the way food loss is defined and the you know, if you if you use that definition as a framework to identify what are the uh, you know the policy on the regulatory uh platforms available um these are these situate with the ministry of of agriculture for example the 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 issue of food waste on the other hand which is retail and above situates more with the ministry of consumer department of consumer affairs for example because this is basically talking about consumption and i think um uh, and there is a there is a set of there's a large a uh, number of policy initiatives and programs and schemes of the government of india which i i don't want to name them because that will take me a lot of time but they are there on a on a briefing paper that we've just published uh, uh, a few weeks ago and i'm happy to share the link here on the chat box for people who are interested um as far as case studies are concerned i think um the 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 quick and the dirty answer is no there are not too many case studies of how private sector is trying to address this problem and i think that's the the knowledge gap that we need to probably fill in uh, specifically by uh, understand there might be they they are already doing it you know like i think krishna was saying uh, um, the issue of market linkages right um do i have a bit of a difference of an opinion in terms of you know how do you get the right infrastructure to be developed and who should be uh, leading that process uh, but be that as it may i think there are there are i mean the 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 the, the bad news is that there are not too many documented case studies but the good news is that there are practice there are practices on the ground which are being undertaken i think the onus really would be on all of us to start 
to get into this process. We've had some conversation with the Retailers Association of India, for example, uh, to try and see if we can work out with some of their members to do more of the food waste kind of a good practice. Um, and and you know and and so unfortunately there aren't you know I can't sort of point to a a set of um, a resource where those case studies would be available. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, Sujit. So we have oversuited our uh, time. We have uh, close to more minutes. Uh, uh, I need to quickly get into the concluding remarks as you know, Vijay has assigned me to do that, but I don't think there are much to conclude because the the, the presentations and the question answers, uh, the questions were also uh, much explanatory to, uh, to 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 get a you know over overarching picture of this uh, scenario in India. Uh, but one thing I can add, which is that I think the Danfoss website has a good case study documented that is the Tamil Nadu uh, farmers like Krishna was. One long back, you know, introducing that to me, and you know, that that's something something nice. If uh, the, the person who has put up that question can go to the website and just check it around. That's a that's a wonderful case uh, case of uh, farmers got brought together. So ultimately, the conclusion is uh, uh, is really like there's a lot to be done in this country, and you know, beyond this 12.3, it is also connecting with the nutrition and uh, you know other health scenarios as Vijay was mentioning. And it's also connected much with the livelihoods, in fact, like the farmers' livelihoods, because 30% uh, increase in the livelihoods means that much of reduction in the GHG emission. So, you know, it's wonderful that you now we get got into different dimensions of food loss and waste. One is, of course, reducing food loss and waste, and second is the nutrition, improving the nutrition scenario, getting more food available for people, and thereby reducing the, reducing the inflation, reducing the greenhouse gas emission and all. And ultimately, it is more or less clear that we have only vague picture about India, uh, and also that you know, we, you know, we know its existence here, and we know the magnitude at the very macro level. At micro level, only in some cases of uh, you know commodities and some you know, some some supply chains, but we need very much coordinated effort. And of course, I think uh, you know WRA India uh, and along with FOLU, the effort uh, towards bringing this friends of champions and champions 12.3 program to India will make some remarkable changes to set good models to be replicated. Thanks to, thanks to everyone. Thanks to the, the, uh, the panelists, thanks to speakers, Liz especially for introducing this to us and Krishna for your wonderful, uh, you know, experience-based elaboration of situation and uh, for Rajit, your insight into the policies. And thanks to Ruchika for a wonderful, uh, you know, uh, introduction and the management and also the coordination of the of the of the program, and to Monica for uh, you know for the presentation, which is very much relevant to India. Thanks to Vijay also for the for your very pertinent intervention and point to be considered. And I thank all the parts, all the attendees who have joined from different parts of the world in this program today. Uh, some of some some are, some are very much our colleagues, and you are operating, and others are also welcome to contact us to join hands to work together towards a better food loss and waste management. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.